Welcome to this segment on uh, basic building blocks in commonly used uh, power electronic converters. And uh, in this segment, we will look first look at uh, various structures which are used, and then we will zero in on uh, voltage link structures. They are the most common. And there we will see that uh, we can uh, follow a building block approach, which is a switching power pole and uh, we'll control it by pulse width modulation. And then we'll also look at some recent advances. So if you can summarize the role of power electronics uh, in various applications, uh, utility is commonly the source of uh, power and energy. And uh, then we have this power electronics interface as the black box, uh, as an interface. And uh, then the output could be adjustable DC uh, as uh, in case of photovoltaics, uh, uh, that's uh, really the input. And uh, sinusoidal AC, for example, in uh, wind electric applications. And then uh, there are certain applications like uh, uh, high frequency lighting, compact fluorescent lamps, where we need uh, high frequency AC. So all of these things are uh, to be looked at in a course like this. But if we classify the various structures that we have, we'll see that we have voltage link systems, current link systems, and so-called matrix converters, which are a direct, direct link systems. So let's uh, talk about uh, voltage link systems. These are the most common. And uh, for example, in uh, windmills and uh, photovoltaic or uh, electric and hybrid electric vehicles, we'll, we use this type of uh, structure where uh, we have utility on one side, load on the other side, but uh, these two are decoupled by this capacitor in the middle here. So there's a converter one and converter two on the other side, and there's a DC voltage in between here. Uh, when it comes to current link systems, uh, these are used as an example in HVDC the transmission uh, between this uh, AC system 1 and AC system 2, uh, we have these two converters commonly made up of thyristors, and uh, these are connected with, his, an, inductor, with an inductor in series here. Uh, then uh, we have uh, matrix converters, uh, where, is, uh, the, uh, where there is no storage element. As we saw in the previous two systems, in one there was a capacitor in the middle, in the other there was an inductor in series, but here it basically consists of uh, a matrix of switches, and we directly convert this incoming AC voltage at one frequency to some other desired frequency uh, at the output by means of these matrix converters. So there's a quite a quite a bit of research that's going on uh, in this area here, but uh, by and large, most power electronic converters consist of voltage link systems that, like the type shown here and described earlier. And as you can see here, that there is a capacitor which sort of uh, decouples these two converters. And uh, uh, another advantage here is that we only need to use uh, transistors uh, which normally can handle or block a unipolar voltage. So th those are the type of transistors those are needed here and uh, they suffice. And uh, because of this uh, intermediate uh, storage between the input and the output, there's an immunity from momentary input power interruptions. So the utility may disappear here, but uh, this load could uh, be supplied for a certain time based on the storage, energy storage in this capacitor here. So uh, in such voltage link systems, we'll see that a switching power pole can be thought of as the basic building block. So what is this switching power pole? Well, this switching power pole uh, consists uh, uh, of a two port where one side is a voltage port here and the other side is a current port made up of this inductor in series. And then in between, there's a bipositional switch. And this switch can be either in the up position uh, when this uh, signal is high, or it could be in the down position when the signal goes low. So if you look at the voltage waveform based on the signal position, 
of this uh, uh, voltage V sub A, which is plotted here as a function of time, it shows that when the switch is in the high position, up position, the voltage V A is equal to V N, otherwise it's zero. So this waveform repeats and uh, uh, we can make use of it to synthesize whatever we desire. And uh, the control over what we uh, on the average would get out at the current port over here is uh, dictated by this uh, duty ratio dA and this duty ratio dA of the switch is defined as the, the time interval when the switch is in the up, up position divided by the time period T sub s with which this waveform is repeating. So we will, this uh, T sub s is uh, 1 over the switching frequency and if we keep the switching frequency constant then this uh, switching time period is constant as well and uh, depending upon uh, the fraction of the time the switch is in the up position dictates this uh, duty ratio dA here. So that's what is shown here. The switching signal is plotted as a function of time and uh, its average is equal to the, the duty ratio of the switch uh, dA. Uh, sometimes it's called duty cycle and uh, uh, corresponding to this then the voltage waveform V sub A is plotted over here and its average value uh, V sub A is shown with a bar on top to show that this is an average value which is plotted in red here. So once again the same thing is uh, uh, being shown here and uh, it shows that uh, this VA average then is equal to this DA times VN. So by controlling this uh, duty ratio we can control the uh, the output voltage. So putting this uh, uh, building block or the switching power pole in a buck converter as an example we can see that uh, uh, later on we'll see that the average voltage across this inductor in steady state is zero and therefore uh, the average of this voltage is equal to the output that appears and that is shown by this equation here and, uh, and we can control this V0 to be in a range from zero to the input voltage Vn here and uh, of course dA then is in the range of zero to one right here. And uh, this slide is showing how this uh, switching power pole can be implemented for uh, this application of a buck converter. We can uh, have a trans transistor here and a diode like this and when the transistor is on this uh, buck converter is reverse biased and the current would flow through uh, this inductor in this direction uh, through the transistor and when this transistor is turned off then this inductor current free wheels through this diode. So this uh, uh, bipositional switch can be uh, implemented using a transistor and a diode. Now there are uh, certain recent advances and there is potential for further advances. Uh, these devices are constantly evolving in terms of the voltages and currents they can handle. Their switching times are getting smaller and smaller. That means they can be operated at higher frequencies. They are application specific ICs, uh, DSPs and microcontrollers can make controlling of these converters very easy and this also includes the FPGAs. And then we have integrated and intelligent power modules when where many of these devices, power devices are integrated into a single module and also there is some uh, gate drive circuitry, some intelligence included in them. Uh, there is a great deal of effort being put into packaging of these devices. And uh, at the moment most devices are made up, power devices are made up of uh, uh, silicon, but uh, there are other materials being looked at like uh, silicon carbide and uh, also, you know, in terms of passive components that are required in making these converters, uh, there is effort in high energy density capacitors. So uh, it uh, brings us to the end of this segment where we looked at uh, the, 
the, the basic building block of power electronic converters. But first we started out by classifying the various structures. And then we saw that uh, the voltage link structure is the most common. Uh, for example, used in uh, wind turbines, uh, photovoltaic systems, and uh, uh, you know, electric transportation, uh, like uh, uh, electric vehicles. And uh, this basic building block essentially is a switching power pole, and it's controlled uh, by this pulse width modulation. And we also looked at recent and potential advancements in power electronics. Thank you very much.